You may be seated. If you look at this passage of Scripture, the children of Israel will now at this point where they are trying to figure out where they are. On last week, we talked about that we are now, Moses was at a point of being 120 years old. And now he was celebrating his birthday and was speaking to the children of Israel that they were about to go forward and cross over. But he was able to adamantly tell them that he was not going to be able to cross over with them uh, because of the things that he has done. Uh, so we shared that we had to make sure that he recounted the Ten Commandments as first shared in the book of Exodus to them. Exodus chapter 20, verses 2 and verse 17. 2 to 17 was the first time that Moses talked about and shared these commandments. Uh, and we, last week we talked about that this can't be it, that the place that where you are can't be it. And we declared that we need to point out our promised land and that we were on the way. Now, there was a transition in leadership. Moses to Joshua was documented in Numbers. Uh, but Moses was still going through a point where he was instructing them that they need to get ready to be on their way. A lot of us now understands that as dictated in a Chinese proverb that a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. The steps of a good man are ordered by God. The moderately active person in today's lifestyle that most of us have to walk every now and again. Anybody ever remembered walking before you had a car? That you had to walk anywhere and everywhere. Uh, have anyone ever walked to someone's house that they loved? Even though they didn't have a car, but love made your feet a little lighter and your heart a little bit heavy. Uh, Deacon Ken is over there uh, saying amen and hallelujah because several times as a young boy, uh, I, he said in his, his he said in his uh, testimony, Pastor, that you were the one that often opened the door for him. Uh, but I remember that I used to make sure that I let him in uh, some occasions. Uh, that I remembered when he would walk from his now wife's house to our house. And sometimes if he wasn't too tired, I think he may have walked down the hill once or twice. I'm not too certain. But love will make you walk and do things. But in this story, the average person takes around 7,500 steps per day. Meaning if you live for average age of 80 years old, you would have walked 216 million, 262,500 steps by time you have died. Look at your neighbor and says, we walk a lot. That's equivalent to 110,000 miles before you die. Now, the children of Israel were now at a point that they had to walk just 300 plus miles to get from where they are to where they needed to be. Uh, that journey started in the land of Egypt that was just 361 miles from Egypt to Canaan. You're thinking now that that's not really that long. It isn't. It is actually not that long of a mile. A healthy person could be able to do that in under 10 or 15 days. However, this journey wasn't done alone. Look at your neighbor said they weren't walking alone. Uh, there were a band of people, as we said, who were liberated from slavery. And there were a lot of people that had a little different cultures and beliefs and things that have happened to them. Look at your neighbor and say, they weren't walking alone. Look, look at your neighbor who's a little bit more friendly. Uh, they weren't walking alone. Yeah, that's that neighbor. Every time we go forward, that's the neighbor we're going to talk to. Because the other one ain't, ain't, ain't really saved anyway. Uh, uh, but we're we, we going to make sure they weren't walk, we weren't walking alone. Uh, but see, because they were walking with a whole bunch of people that weren't going or had the same agreements with them. Uh, this is the first thing. Uh, on your way, look at your neighbor and say, on my way, 
everyone can't go. Ah, see, this is everyone. Everyone can't go. Ah, you have to understand that everyone can't go because these now children of Israel I was walking with a whole bunch of people that had a whole bunch of opinions about where they should and shouldn't go. Uh, you have to understand now that everyone can't go because when you have a whole bunch of people with you, everyone has an opinion. Uh, if you've ever been on a journey and been walking or doing something by yourself, it's a little bit easier because you don't have to worry about who should do this and what should go there or who has an opinion. As we call them sometimes, we call them backseat drivers. Have you ever given a ride to someone or driven with someone who is in the passenger seat and they have more opinions about how you should drive, how fast you're going, that you need to watch this or watch this car, and they just become an irritant. If they're next to you, just do this. Don't say nothing. Just do this. Don't say nothing. Just, don't, don't say nothing. Don't break up that happy home. Just, just. And you were thinking in your mind that if I was in this car, in this boat, here by myself, I won't have to listen to your fussing and complaining. Uh, but you have to understand that everyone can't go. And this was explicitly showed in this scripture uh, because the Bible dictates that at the old generation, of the old generation that came out, and now as Moses is sitting talking to these children of Israel, of the old generation of the men that remain who were liberated from Israel or Egypt, you know who were left, left over? It was Moses... Caleb and Joshua, out of all the men, in that 40 years, all those people, only Moses, Caleb, and Joshua. Look at your neighbor and say, everyone can't go. See, reason why we want to walk into our abundance, and we need to get bold to know that everyone is not going to be in this season of life that you're about to walk into. And it's okay, because if you try to bring them, you're just going to delay the journey. Now, if Moses, Caleb, and Joshua were the only three people who were leaving the land of Egypt, imagine how quick it would have been. Because all of them were on the same page, same accord. They trusted God. But sometimes you have people around you who now look at your dreams, look at your desires, look at what God has for you, and they don't agree. You think that they're happy with you. Uh, you, 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 you. You're looking around and think that they're happy with you. Uh, I, I, I must say uh, 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 thank you to the Engaged Smiths. Uh, Engaged Smith, I have now become the love preacher they called me this week. Uh, they said if they want to get engaged, uh, a pastor, they're coming here to the love preacher. Uh, I said it, it, once you tithe, it's okay. I'm just joking. Here's why I say it, because I'm sure they know, or you know, that everybody that says congratulations ain't really congratulating you. Everyone can't be invited to your table of blessing. Everyone can't go. So now if you're going on a journey, you have to make sure that you have the right people with you along that journey. I know it might be hard, but you need to test. Just check them. Check. If you want to see who's going to travel the journey, you said, I'm about to do this. God has declared this abundance in my life. God says we need to go over here to the promised land. Just check their behavior. Some people, it's easy for them to be like, oh, I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. Check them in two days. See how happy they are that you got that blessing in your life. Check their status. Check their Facebook page. Check, just check them. Because we need to start to investigate who we're bringing along in our journey because depend on who we bring along depends on how far we're going to be able to reach. Look at neighbor and say, we need to shed unnecessary weight. 
There's a cost. Now, now I love my wife. I love her very much. I love my wife very much. Uh, but, and, and she's passed something on to my youngest daughter, uh, to, to Amel. She's passed something on to Amel. Amel, if you know her, Amel is very quiet, and she's very, you know, laid back, but very serious. Nobody can really read her. She, she's just very serious and very nice and very calm. Uh, but Amel's a diva, amen? Somebody pray for me. Amel's a diva. Amel is a diva, and it's okay. We love her very much. Amel sits in her room, does her homework, reads a book, plaits her dolly's hair, then does her mom's makeup and her makeup. Uh, she designs her own clothes, and she's a fashionista, amen? Uh, she's a fashionista nonetheless. Uh, this past summer, we were going to Puerto Rico, uh, our first trip, family trip after COVID. Uh, we were just going to Puerto Rico, and, 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 and Amel started packing her clothes. Uh, Amel started packing her clothes. Amel now had a suitcase around this big. You have to understand at this point, she was seven years old. A suitcase this big. And then she came and I remember her and she says, Mommy, I packed all my clothes, but I need another bag for my other stuff. And at this point, I'm looking at the seven-year-old and what possibly, and when you look in her bag, she's very organized. Uh, she will have shirts, pants and then she wants a separate bag for her shoes because she doesn't want her shoes to dirty her clothes. I told you she's a she's seven. Why Elijah just got a trash bag and said let's go. I'm just joking. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't get a trash bag. That's not true. He, he, ha. But that's his personality. If he could get a trash bag and go, that, that's what he'll do. Just, just give me the Ziploc bag. I'm good. I'm good, Dad. Just let me go. Here's the thing that I had to tell Mel. I said, Mel, we're going to go. She picked it up from her mom. Parents, the children see your behavior. They pick it up. When you go to the airport, you have a weight limit of 50 pounds. In my life of traveling with my wife, we have seldom gone to the airport and not have to shut nothing. Hit. I don't know the men in here, you can say amen. It's nothing more I hate or dislike. You can't say hate in the pulpit, Pastor. It's nothing more I dislike than going to the airport and having to open your bag to shift. You, you understand what I'm saying? To shift, he, he, he over there like, to shift stuff around to move two pounds into this bag. And my wife thinks it's just a great activity to just move here and there. And I'm just there steaming. We don't need this. And here's the thing. Before we get back, we have to buy two more suitcases anyway. But here's the thing. Here's the whole secret. The more weights you carry, the more the airline charges you. Some of you are carrying stuff and are overweight and are paying the cost spiritually because you're carrying too much stuff. Everyone, look at neighbor, say everyone can't go. Uh, the second thing I want to remind you is that you need to listen while you're on the way of your journey. Uh, it says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord with all your heart. He says to hear, O Israel. That means on your way to your journey, you not only make, have to make sure that everyone can't go with you, but you need to listen properly. Now, this is the important thing, and I've, I've said this point so many times in so many iterations, but God wants to remind you today that you need to listen on the journey. Here's the important part. You need to make sure that you're listening to the right person. Because on this journey that you're about to take to your abundance, there's going to have a lot of people that have a lot of opinions of what you should be doing. But it will be kind of ironic if you allow people to influence and direct your path when God is the one who told you where to go. 
So then you start to listen to their advice more than what God is saying for your life. Oh, you might be saying, well, that doesn't, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't, I mean, I, 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 listen to, I listen to God all the time. God told me to go, I'm going to go. Uh, God told me to do this, I'm going to do this. Uh, uh, is, is that true? Is, is that true? Let me, let me just park in your parking lot just for, just for a second. Can I have your parking space? Let me just tell you this for a second. Uh, when God told you to go and start that business, when God told you to step out and start that ministry, when God told you to write that book, when God told you to lay your hands on your daughter lay your hands on your son when God told you to trust me when God told me to forgive that person when God told you to do that here's what you did you went to your neighbor and says you sure that God thinks that I should do this are you questioning and this is what we do we don't just go ahead and listen to God it's need to be able that we listen and act at the same time that means we trust and obey that we are obedient in a journey when we're listening it's not just an exercise is us making sure that we listen to what God is saying and then we do it. Yeah, I knew it got quiet. Yeah, I know, I know it got quiet. I know it got quiet. Uh, we need to listen and obey. Uh, you have to understand how frustrated Moses must have been. This is 40 years of leading these same people. And I don't know, is anybody in here that have children that don't hear? They just don't listen. The airs are filled with bricks, with cement. You want to know? <laughs> Here's the... <laughs> Here's the thing, my dad, right, my dad, I've never heard my dad cuss, ever, not even slip out of one, I never heard it. And, but what he used to tell me and my brother and my mom, they used to say this, when they say something over and over, over and over, over and over. And you know we're British, right? We're British of a territory. And here's what he used to proclaim. Y'all don't understand the Queen's English. I was like, at that point, he's at the, when you hear him say that, he's at the limit. The only thing comes after that is the fist or, you know. But that comes after you're so frustrated that you feel that you can't hear. And some of you are frustrated at God because he has to keep repeating the same things in your life over and over because you didn't listen. And you're going through the same tests over and over because you didn't listen. So here's the thing now. You're wondering why now in Deuteronomy is Moses repeating the Ten Commandments again after he gave them already in Exodus? Because they didn't listen to them so he was saying I'm gonna say this to you one more time and for some of you right here God is saying some stuff to you one more time and it's right now if you're at this stage in your life that I advise you if God is speaking to you to do something you need to listen because this might be the last time that God speaks this word over your life you got one more time that you need to listen I, I remember on this journey that everyone can't go with you, that you need to listen, uh, but you need to walk for love. Uh, if you remember this scripture in verse 4, uh, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Uh, verse 5 says, Love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Uh, it said that, and now if you recounted that Jesus recovered and recounted this, when they asked him, which one of all the laws that existed is the most and most prolific law? And Jesus says, uh, to love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And to love your neighbor as yourself. And this came now from the same place all along. Look at your neighbor and say, walk for love. Look at your next neighbor and say, walk for love. 
Uh, as we started this sermon, we said love is a powerful thing. Uh, it will make you do things that you never thought that you would do. That's why I'm convinced that God compelled us to love him with all our heart and with all our soul and with all your strength and not a halfway type of love. Uh, because it comes important that when if you're loving God, if you're moving and if you're doing, that you need to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. On the way and the journey, I want to be able to remind you, I want you to walk for love. Meaning that if you're going to do stuff, if you're going to do stuff and walk on this journey for abundance, walk for love. Uh, some of us that I want you to understand that you may be in different points of your journey, uh, but you need to walk for love. Uh, there are things that may happen in your life, but you need to walk for love. Now, there's some people that do things for popularity. Uh, there's some people that do things for fame. Uh, there's some people that do things to just to see how people may react. Uh, but you need to do it just for love. Uh, meaning that if you're now at this point in your life uh, that you're on the way to your abundance, that you're on the way to your journey and your victory, to your promise, I want you to do it for love. Uh, meaning that in spite of what's happening, in spite of what's going on, that you need to do it for love. Uh, I want you to remember and understand that when you're walking that you have to walk confidently. Uh, there's going to be some times in your life that you may feel like giving up, that you may feel like throwing in the towel, but you need to walk for love. Uh, that you have to understand that sometimes uh, when you're on this journey there's gonna be some difficulty and some hardships you need to walk for love uh, that you have to understand that on your journey to your promised land on your journey to your abundance on your journey to possess the thing that you pointed out is yours there's gonna be some difficulties uh, there's gonna be some trials uh, there's gonna be some temptations uh, but if you're walking for love and if you're doing it for the love of God that nothing will be able to stand in your way. Uh, here's why I'm saying this. Uh, some of us, if you've ever been in love, uh, anybody ever been in love, uh, just raise your hand, even if you don't feel loving right now. Uh, if anybody ever been in love and anybody ever done something crazy when you've been in love, anybody ever done something crazy, like crazy, crazy. I mean, like you should be locked up in a mental institution crazy that you don't know why you did it, but you did it nonetheless. Anybody Anybody? Uh, now, it could be something nice. Uh, it could be something pretty. Uh, but anybody ever been crazy in love uh, that you were the one that was sleeping outside somebody's job, waiting for them to come off just to say good morning, uh, just to say good night? Uh, I'm talking about that crazy, crazy kind of love. That love that makes you walk and you don't even feel tired. The love that fills your stomach, that says that you don't even need to eat. That love that causes you to sleep at home and look all crazy. That love that keeps you just saying that up on the phone that you're going to sleep like this. No, you say good night. No, you say good night. No, you say good night. No, I'm not going to hang up. No, I love you. I love you more. I love you more. I, that kind of love that has everybody, that kind of love that in spite of what is going on in your life, you're walking like this. That you're calling into z -Rod and calling into... I know it don't happen no more. But you're calling into Zira and saying, this love song has been requested by that special one from that special one. That kind of love that makes you so weak in your knees that you can... That's why I, God commanded you in verse 5 to love God with all your heart, soul, and strength. Because he knew, if you love me with all your heart, your mind, and your strength, that when you're on this journey, in spite of what you're about to go through, in spite of what you're about to face, that you're going to walk through 
hell and high water to get to your abundance. Uh, that you're going to make sure, uh, God, I love you so much. Uh, that no matter what they say about me, uh, no matter what they talk about me, I'm going to keep walking. God, in spite of uh, how difficult it may get, uh, in spite of my heart it may get, as I walk this year uh, into my land of abundance, I'm going to walk through whatever uh, hurdles, uh, valleys, haters, uh, oppositions, doubt, anxiety. God, I'm going to walk. Look at this said I'm about to walk I'm about to walk I'm about to walk look at your neighbor and says I'm about to walk and here's the thing here's the thing that you need to get reminded uh, here's the thing that you need to be excited about here's the thing that should make you happy here's the thing that should make you shout uh, some of you want you about to get it if you love God and you trust God and you glorify God here's his promise that I will be with you that I will go with you and you will never be alone on a journey uh, you might not get it but here's what happened to me and I'm gonna share it just like I got it I'm gonna share it just like I got it don't get scared don't get scared don't get scared I'm gonna share with you just like I got it here's the thing where you know you when you walk alone if you walk alone you're not really alone because God says I'm gonna be with you if you love me I'm gonna be with you and now see this is why the songwriter was able to say even though I come to the garden uh, alone uh, while the dew is still on the roses uh, and the voices we hear as we tarry there uh, no one will ever know and here's the thing just uh, a closer walk with thee help me Jesus I want I want as much people here who are about and ready to say that God, I'm ready to walk into my abundance. I'm ready to move into my abundance. I'm ready to go into my abundance. I'm better to move. I'm better to walk. I know people might question what I'm about to do. Uh, it don't have to be everybody because everybody can't walk with us. Everybody's not going to walk with you. So don't, don't worry about who's on your right and your left. Don't worry about who's standing. Don't worry about who's clapping uh, because this is your journey. Uh, this is where you're about to go. If you're right now ready at a position and saying, God, I didn't even ask you to walk forward, uh, but you're walking forward. See, that's the thing. When you know that God has called you, uh, uh, when you know that God has positioned you for greatness, all you got to do is start to walk uh, uh, because here's what God has reminded us. Uh, if you walk with me, he will talk with you uh, and he reminds you that you're his own. Uh, you know, you have to understand. Uh, I am weak, uh, but I am strong. Uh, Jesus, keep me uh, from them all. I'll be satisfied uh, all along uh, as I walk the walk closer to thee. Uh, just uh, a closer walk with thee. Grant it, Jesus. Let it be. Uh, daily walking closer to thee. Let it be, Lord. Uh, let it be. That's Now, that's your prayer. Uh, that God, uh, in spite of what happens, in spite of what comes my way, as I walk along this journey let it be let it be in spite of what happens look at your enemy look at your opposition and say God let it be in spite of what happens in your life look at your problems and your opposition and said God I'm walking with you let it be in spite of how difficult it may be God let it be let it be let it be Let it be. Now, if you didn't get all the shouting and all this stuff, here it is. God wants more for your life. 
on this journey, everyone can't go with you. You need to listen and be obedient for where God is calling you to go. And do this thing called life for the love of it. Because love conquers. Love overcomes. Love elevates. Love abounds. And if there's anything more transformative, more refueling, more rectifying, is that compassionate love that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life abundant life joyous life elevated life as we're about to pray if you have not already at the altar and you want to come no matter where you are and saying God I don't know every direction you're taking me but I want to walk with you as we're about to pray just raise your hand we're going to pray for you wherever you are we see those hands we see those hands we see those hands your hand is a symbolization of your faith we see those hands so God right now in this moment this moment that is entirely yours this moment that is entirely yours we now God submit our walk to you we haven't been perfect sometimes we felt like giving up but God we walk with you Thank you, God, for your redeeming blood. Thank you, God, for giving us a second chance. Thank you, God, for loving us. If we have felt discouraged, distraughting, and despondent, God, remind us that you have always loved us. And we ask you, Lord, now to forgive us and grant us a second chance. And now that we have a second chance, we'll walk uprightly and circumspectly. Meaning God will just try our best with your strength to just get it right this time. Our land of abundance is before us. And we're going to walk to it. Give us the grace, the mercy, the blessing, the understanding and the wisdom to know when to go right, left, or to stop, or to go. God, in every way, we just ask you to be with us in this journey called life. In your name we pray. Everybody please say amen. 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 to have our benediction but I want to as a pastoral note uh, to remind us about something that's very important happening in our church on this Tuesday on um, this Tuesday we will meet at this church uh, church is being used for the constitutional review board uh, they're gonna have a meeting of how we do and review our Constitution it's gonna be here at 7 p.m. now here's why this is important it's important 
because this is going to be dependent on our future and what happens this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Now, here's the thing. When you walk in life and you're doing things and God asks you to let me fight your battles for you, here's what you need to do. Just step out the way and let God fight. Don't ignore it. It happens in real life and in your spiritual life. So now that I see my senior pastor right behind me, I'm going to step out the way. I don't often do this, but we heard a powerful word today. And I just want to check and see if you remembered what you heard. Abundance on the way. What is the first thing? Huh? Ah, that's good. That's good. What's the second thing? You're good. You're good. But let me really test you now. What's the last thing? Okay. Well, I stopped by just before we have the benediction that if you wanted a good example of what it means to walk full of, I want to introduce you and recognize a couple who on the 12th of this month celebrated 49 years of walking together. Now, I don't have to ask them, because I know I've been walking myself, that there have been rainy days. Just say amen. There have been sunny days. There have been difficult days, and there have been hard days. But nevertheless, they have been walking for 49 years together. I speak of none other than Maestro Danley and Pastor Ethlyn Reimer. So let's all stand as we have the benediction. As you and I, we're in this together. Journey to our abundance. If you ever get tired and frustrated, and want to give up, just remember this couple. 49 years. And if they could make it, then I can make it too. Everybody stay on the way. Everybody can't go. I will listen. And I will walk for love. Give God praise. Father, we thank you for such a beautiful day. We thank you for your goodness. And now as we're about to leave this place, I pray that you will constantly remind us that you will never leave us and you will never forsake us. So help us to walk with confidence. Help us to walk with confidence. Knowing that nothing absolutely can separate us from the love of God. So bless us in our going out and in our coming in. Unto you be glory, dominion, and power. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Somebody say amen. God bless you. Have a great day.